Um, anyway, so uh, thanks for coming on tonight. We're going to do some painting. Uh, just wanted to let you know we're trying to grow the numbers here. And so if you know of anybody who would like to join in, please invite them and um, they're welcome to come and we'll do goofy things. If you know some of the stuff that I do and you want me to, um, to teach some certain things, please just let me know. Send me a quick email and uh, I'll try and fit those things in. Um, if you're inviting people, have them go to YouTube and subscribe. That would be great because then they'll know um, when there's a new video. And we are videoing each of these. Yes, Bill? And you can find it off of KarenBeco.com. And you can find that off of KarenBeco.com too. See, he's the one who's he's prompting me here. So he has to sit here and tell me what to do. <laughs> anyway, um, so I lost my train of thought because you interrupted me. What was it thinking? Subscribe. Subscribe. Get notifications. Yeah. Let know. Let us know if there's something you want us to do. And uh, yeah, mm, we're having fun. And here comes Missy. So um, tonight we're going to be painting a little bit. And this is just the, like the first part of, sorry for the tail, but she's sure. checking. I got <laughs> on <here. laughs> It's the only table she's allowed to go on. Anyway. Um, we're going to be starting just by painting um, cardstock tonight and stuff like that. And we're going to use this in the next following weeks to do different things. And I'll be showing you some stuff on like adding, adding items to the paper and stuff like that. So what I asked for you guys to provide tonight was some sort of cardstock. Now the stuff that I have is just cheap cardstock that I get. I scrounge from places <laughs> from Multiple places. Multiple places. Anyway, so um, they're not acid free, but this is what I make my cards out of. So if you've seen my hand painted cards, then you'll know what I'm talking about. But this is the kind of stuff that I use. And I use this stuff quite often when I'm, when I'm, if I'm trying to clean a brush or clean a tool or something like that, I'll use the cardstock to do that kind of thing. So, like, this is one that I've been working on. I've used it for spray paint. I've used it to try out to clean off stamps and stuff like that. So it's starting to get a little bit of color to it, but um, it has a long oh, has a long way to go. Um, the other thing I asked you to provide is a canvas board or a canvas or something. So this one's quite big. You could just use like the small ones that you got for the snowflakes if you did the snowflakes with us, but it's just a canvas board. It's they're pretty cheap. You can get them at the dollar store. You can get them at Michael's. Um, they're usually gessoed. I just wanted to you to have something like that so you could sort of see how my process is as I'm painting and how I clean my brushes and things like that. So um, I just thought if you had it handy and eventually we'll do something with it and it'll be kind of fun because we'll be able to play with it a bit. So anyway, the paints that I, that I'm going to use tonight, I'm just going to use the basics paints. These are the Liquitex basics. They're inexpensive. I use them for student, they're student grade paints. I think they're just fine. I know a lot of artists who actually use them. But I also have know a lot of artists who say, ooh, don't use those because they're not good. But I'm not that picky. Um, sometimes I'll get people will comment and say, well, I don't like this paint because it doesn't have enough pigment in it. And I kind of, I, I guess I'm not that picky about it because I'm an abstract artist and I'm not trying to paint the perfect color of green for a tree or a field or something like that. So for me, what comes out of the tube okay it, if it's got more pigment or less pigment it doesn't really matter to me i just i'll just paint with it so anyway so i'm going to use the basics with you guys if, if that's what you got i have tried to use dollar store paint and it doesn't work it's horrible so that's my pickiness i've also got this one this is an artist loft uh, paint this is from michael's um the only reason i have it is because it's metallic Ooh, that's kind of fun. So every once in a while, you just have to buy a fun paint and play with it and see what happens. So um, I have my bucket of water. Isn't that beautiful? And uh, I have my snacks, which I'll put, off, put away. <laughs> I also have my drink. 
Just make sure you don't dip your paintbrush in your drink, right? Whether you're drinking wine or whatever, but we all do it. Anyway, I also have a couple of paintbrushes. So I didn't want to go with small paintbrushes. I wanted to go with something a bit bigger because I'm going to play a little bit putting this uh, paint down on the paper. So this is one of my favorite brushes. It's a nice size and it does lots of fun things. Yay. So are you guys ready? Yep. Excellent. Okay. So one of the things that I do when I'm painting, I guess leave that guy over there. I'm going to start with a nice clean. When I'm painting, a lot of the times I won't use a palette, although I wish I had a palette tonight. Anyway, but the other thing you can do is if you don't have a palette or if you have a palette, you can put your paint in the palette, but I don't like mixing my paints there. I like mixing them on the paper. So I don't mind just blobbing some paint on there. I am going to put a little bit of water in my brush just so that it helps smooth it around. And I'm just gonna paint. And it's like, I'm scribbling paint on the paper. And I'm gonna add water because I just do, just to thin it out a little bit. You won't find any palettes, Bill, I, I put them all away. Huh? I know, I know I've, I've, been, I've been trying to purge my studio. Look at how beautiful that purple is. Like, so that's a basics purple. I don't know, seems like a lot of pigment to me. <laughs> it's very colorful, so I, I love it. Anyway, and I'm just muss mussing around here. I put a little bit too much paint on it, so I don't want it, I don't want it too much painted or else it's gonna take forever to dry and then we won't be able to cut it. But then the other thing you can do is once I've got some of that paint on, that's when I add some other paint. I have no idea what this is going to do, but that's kind of beautiful. Ooh, look at that metallic. It's so cool. And so now I'm, I'm just basically mixing the paint on my palette and creating this sort of, it's like a background, right? And I've got paint paper underneath this and I'm going ahead and just getting a bit of paint on that paper below because I don't care. A little bit more water. So this one's very full of paint. And I can see that the paper's curling just a little bit. That's okay. I'm just going to set it aside. And look, I got another one started. Now, sometimes if I want to clean my brush, I will put some water on it and then I'll just do this on my paper. I have a whole stack of this kind of paper next to my sink. So when I go to clean my brushes, I'm getting as much paint out of the brush and onto my paper as I can. Cause I really don't want the paint to go down the sink. Cause first of all, it's not good for your pipes, but I'm also very frugal when it comes to supplies. So, you know, I can do something where I'm just messing around and all of a sudden I've got two backgrounds that are kind of, kind of nice. Oh, some of this stuff is a bit dry. Bottom edge of your frame. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Worst comes to worst, you just take the whole lid off. It's still very dry. Anyway. I haven't used this stuff for a long time because I haven't taught classes. But, you know, don't be afraid of making big lines and making big messes on your paper because that's, you're just going to cover it anyway and you're going to change it every, every time you look at it. So, and I'm going right to the edges. So if you need to get something down on your, on your tabletop to uh, stop you from, painting your table, which I'm just painting my table because I can, that's okay. So now I've got two done. Okay, this one, I've obviously used it for spray painting. So look how neat it looks, eh? So I can just work back into this a little bit and just add a little bit more color. And it's not gonna adhere to that spray paint. It kind of, it's kind of 
bubbling on that spray paint because that's just the nature of the spray paint. That's all right. And it's really just, oh, that was a lot of paint. When you have something like this where you put too much paint on, it just takes some of it off, put it on your canvas board. Now, one of the things when I'm painting, like when I'm painting a, an abstract painting, I mean, it, it really does look like I'm just throwing paint around here and I'm just sort of, you know, I'm not really being very careful and stuff like that. But when I am doing a painting, I am often thinking about things like um, my focal point and balance and color choices and quiet spaces. I, somebody had to tell me that I, I need more quiet spaces in my work. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. So, you know, sometimes as you're, as you're doing something like this, and you can see my paper is curling quite a bit on me, but that's okay because it's going to flatten out later eventually as I work on it and stuff. Like, this is almost landscape-y, right? It's almost like it could be a landscape if I worked at it a little bit. I could create a focal point. You know, this is this this sort of light area here is kind of a little bit like a focal point. When you're working on something and you want a focal point in your piece. So say you have a piece of paper like this. Where you want your focal points. Never in the center. You want it here or here or here or here. Now there's lots of rules around that, but having like a nice focal point right here on your piece can be really, really, your eye is drawn to it and you kind of work around those things. So as you're working on these pieces, on these papers that we're just, you know, covering with paint, your next step is to probably work back into them and see if you can create a focal point on one of your pieces. We'll see what happens. See, I'm getting very, very light here with my paint because I, I don't want to put too much paint on. I want things to dry a little bit so that I can work back into them. But I'm going to put some yellow in here. Now, I've just destroyed my focal point, maybe, because I've got this yellow that is kind of like the bully. And it's taking all the attention away from that, that one little point that I had there. That's okay. I wasn't married to the fact that I wanted that as my focal point. And it still could be, it could be uh, like a, an opposite focal point where it's the darker spot. So what a mess, eh? How many of you guys done? Three. One. Spencer, it looks like you're working really hard. <laughs> or he's watching. <laughs> That's okay. I'm watching. I was going to play along, but I don't have any place to put the painted pieces. So I'm just going to watch. Oh, okay. Well, you know, we are recording these, so you can always check back and try it again. And you're welcome to, you know, if, if as we're doing things, you're welcome to post them on our site and send me pictures because I'll like to share. Everybody's done. Okay, I just changed that focal point. And see, part of the thing about experimenting that I love is when I'm putting the paint on is like, look at the colors that I'm getting. It's like, I, I'm really only working with three colors here, but you know, just, it's mixing on the paper itself and I'm getting these really beautiful strokes. I, I don't mind the brush strokes. They can be quite beautiful on their own. I 
I mean, and this is how I would, you know, attack a canvas or a, or anything else that I was painting. I would start off with just a, a loose, very colorful painting like this. Now I'm going to fix this board here because I put this blue on the board. don't want it to sit there like that. So I'm just going to mooch that into that board. And you know what? And sometimes it's just an underpainting, which is like, it may completely get covered by the time I'm done painting, but it just, it's the adding of layers and layers. And that's, that's sort of what we're going to be working on a little bit this week or this month, I guess, is layering how we put different layers and what different things we can do we can add to these pieces so if you have things like i don't know book pages or if you have something like um, negatives or nice paper or tea bags or dryer sheets or coffee filters or anything like that that you think might be nice you should be sort of setting those aside to see what you can do with them on because we're going to next week we're going to start adding to them adding pieces of paper or something or tape or yeah. so now I got my board has like a coat of paint on it which is yay. good for later And sometimes it's just me cleaning my brush. And then the next step to cleaning the brush. I need a rag. Oh, I put them down there. They're by the tools there. So good. glad he's here to grab things for me when I forget to get them for you. So the next step to cleaning my brush is to use a rag to get the paint off the brush also. Because again, I don't want that paint going in my sink or down the drain. And I can add water and clean that brush again on a rag. And why do I use rags? They're good, but look how beautiful they start looking. <laughs> So there's something else you can add to your collage pieces is a beautiful painted rag. They get quite lovely after a while. So, all right. Do we have any that are close to dry? Mm -hmm. This one's going to be wet for a while because it's pretty thick. You can see that metallic in there. It's so much fun. It's like just playing. Okay, so if you have one, have you, have you guys done several? Yeah. Uh, have you kept up with me? I do. <laughs> huh? Huh? <laughs> so if you have one that's sort of mostly dry, because I, I am trying to go quite thin on this. So this this one to me is, is, is fairly dry. So on this one, I've got a pretty good focal point. You can see it's a focal point, even though I've added this really bright yellow, the purple just draws the eye and your eye can go to that purple and then come back over here and then go back to that purple. Well, we're not done. So now you can use your scissors. I like using my cutter. Mm -hmm. And I just want you to cut your piece of paper in half. Okay. Okay. <laughs> no, even if it's really small. Oh, I'll put that down there. So there's my piece with the focal point there. 
but now I've cut it and it's a whole new piece. Look, there's a bunny. Do you guys see that? <laughs> Does it look yeah. like a bunny to everybody else? Yeah. Okay, well, we've got to change that. <laughs> What's a bunny doing in my thing? A bunny with a big purple Easter egg. Anyway, um, it's kind of funny. I can see it so well now. Sorry, that bunny's going to have to go. Anyway, but it's kind of nice because now it's, it becomes a new sort of piece, right? And that's the thing about abstract, right? Like I always tell my customers when they're buying my pieces that it's such a good deal because it's four pieces in one because you could orient it. You, you kind of have to decide which is up and which is down. Oh, that's nice. Less bunny-like. So that's kind of neat because it changes that sort of perspective. This one here, this is the other half, right? Not big focal point, maybe a little bit over here, but I could work on that. So if you've cut your piece in half, what I want you to do now is create, find a new focal point and work on that little bit. So if you need to add a little bit of color, Just like make it a new composition by itself now that you've cut it in half. If I don't have a palette, I'll just use my table. Works just fine. And I don't mind the colors, the way these, this color, you know, comes in here. And I'm this, on the second step, when I'm building this sort of composition and I'm creating this focal point, I'm being a little bit less messy, I guess. I'm still pulling the paint around and doing different things, but I'm not um, just painting a wall sort of thing, like I was sort of doing before. Now I'm sort of thinking about where I want my focal point and what direction this painting is gonna go. And I'm painting right to the edges. It may not end up like that because of course, once I mat it or crop it or whatever, it's gonna change. in there. And different brushes will give you a different effect. I just love this brush, but then, you know, I could use a different brush to come in here and do something else. Oh, I just changed my focal point, didn't I? I do a lot of circles. They're very scribbly and fun. And you can do things where you're adding paint and then maybe you're taking some paint off. And you can do that also. I'm just making a big mess on mine right now. But you know what? I just changed it again. I'm looking at, like it, it's actually really interesting. I, and I learned this when I was doing the demo for, for the sketch club that, you know, as I'm doing things here, I, I, when I look at the camera, the composition looks different to me looking at it in the camera. And I know a lot of artists will do that if they're wanting to get a different look at their work they can take a picture of it and look at it on their phone or on their computer and it'll, it'll feel different. The colors will be different too. Or you can hold it up to a mirror and see it backwards. And sometimes that is just sort of seeing it in a different light. But I'm actually not 
too upset about this composition. I kind of like what's going on. I like this little dark spot that I have going on here. I like this sort of painterly stuff that I have going up there. It's kind of nice. I'm not too happy about this little thing here, but you know what? It's probably going to get cropped off. But you can see now I have kind of like a nice little composition started. So I'm going to take that one. I'm going to set it aside. I'm going to work on this one a little bit. Sorry, Bunny, you have to go. I'm not talking about you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, guy. It's sort of a typical thing, you know, when people say that they see things in my paintings, it's like, well, that's got to go. <laughs> see a dinosaur, but it's gone. So, and I like the fact that, you know, when I'm dealing with layers and layers that it, it sort of, you know, some of them are, are a little bit more transparent and they just leave this, you can see the layers of paint and of what's going on. Okay. It's kind of wet for you to see. How are you guys doing? You got anything to show me yet? Not really. Not really? No. I kind of like the way one is going, but the other one, not so much. Yeah. It's kind of nice. Well, it's certainly your colors. Oh, look at those two little guys. Those are nice. Working on this pinky, greeny. Yeah. How are you doing, Chloe? Good. Good. I'm dark. Yours went really, dark? Yeah. I really like this one that Chloe did. But it's really thick, so I can't use it. Uh, you can use it next week. Yeah. If you, if you try and keep it thinner. The other thing that I do when I'm teaching kids is I never use black. I never let them use black. <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's the biggest bully on the block because as soon as you start using black, then all of a sudden it takes over their whole pictures and then they're unhappy because they've got too much black going on. So you, you very rarely see me using black, maybe in my paintings, but not very often. Well, that, that's why she left it thick because she said it's just turning gray. So yeah. she, she had to leave it thick. Ah! But no, this, don't take my this one has a bit of black and it's not... It's not too bad. I'm not taking over. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, that looks good. Dots. Good job. Okay. Well, I'm gonna leave this one to the side. I'm gonna pull another one over. I'm gonna work on this one some more. I mean, I could do this. I mean, this is how I work on my paintings, right? I I have several that I'm working on at once because. As I'm waiting for one to dry, then the other one's ready for me to paint. So I can work on so many at once that way. The, the hard thing about making so many at once, then you got to finish them. <laughs> That's why I have millions of paintings in my studio that need to be finished. It feels like anyway. Actually, Bill feels like that because he came in and tripped on things as he was coming in here tonight. So I am trying to get rid of stuff. So not an easy job for an artist. And I don't mind using the water on these because they 
just seem to, I don't know. Well, my cardstock is still going to be a little bit ripply, but by the time I'm done with everything, it's not going to be too bad. Oh, I picked up some. Okay. Let's stay away, mister. <laughs> You're getting a cat, cat's input on your paintings? Yeah. Little footprints is okay. I'm just, you know, painting and looking in the camera and seeing what, what my painting looks like. When I was at work today, I was drawing with um, charcoal on a board at my, during my lunch hour. I had to make sure I washed my face when I went back to work. <laughs> because I had a few little smudges here and there. I realized maybe it wasn't a good idea to be working on charcoal while I was eating apple with my fingers. But <laughs> I figured it's not going to hurt me too much either. Okay, has anybody got sort of a composition that they're kind of liking on their piece? No. No. Have you have you created a new focal point on your piece? I'm just starting to do that. They're just they're really dark. I put too much paint on, I think. That yeah, could be. You need to work with these ones. I'm really just doing quick little rushes or washes and stuff. I got a little bit too much there, but it's you know. One of the things that I found when I was first starting to painting and I was experimenting and I would experiment on cheap paper like this and all of a sudden I'd have something really good that I liked and I didn't want to destroy it because I found that I really liked it and it was, it was a painting that was working out for me and I was sad that it was on cheap paper because then I couldn't sell it. I, I couldn't, um, it, it wouldn't be right for me to like, do a composition on this and then sell it as a piece of fine art. Um, well, that's how I used to feel anyway. I don't know if I feel that way as much anymore, but it came to my attention that maybe I shouldn't be playing on cheap paper because when I do have something that turns out so good, it's kind of a waste. Well, I don't waste anything because they all turn into cards or something like that. So to me, it's not a waste anymore, but um, it's kind of interesting when, you know, like I really like how this one's working out and I kind of wish it was on something that I would be able to sell, but oh well. <laughs> I'll just have to do it again. That's looking a little better. Oh, that's nice. Yes, look at those colors. Blending beautifully. It takes the third or fourth layer for it to work though. Yeah, I do love seeing through the the different layers because it just, yeah. you know, there's different brush strokes and different colors showing up and mm. there's blending and there's lines. Okay, I'm going to work on this last one real quick here so that I can just get it sort of. I'm almost dry brushing it, right? Just because I'm, yeah. I'm just trying to get the paint out of my paintbrush, picking up, getting it off my table. Okay. And that's where I'm going to get some nice blending. And, you know, I don't mind using lots of water. You know, also another thing, Thing that I have a lot of artists who say that if you use too much water that you break the binders of the paint and it won't stick to your canvas. Um, I have never had that problem. I've actually done paintings. I did a painting with my hose 
and paint out in the backyard. It was great. Um, but all my paintings, even if I do use lots of water, I'm still coating them with a, with a, with a varathane or, or, or a clear coat afterwards. So it doesn't matter to me about the that binders or that kind of thing. Cause it's all sealed in there anyway. I do know that if you add too much water, it does make your pigments a little bit dull. But that doesn't bother me either because I just use my gloss gel on top and then <laughs> it all brightens up again. <laughs> so not too picky. So this one I'm kind of messing around a little bit more it's very subtle so mama i'm done with another one good job moving right. into the room okay and we're going to do i guess you need another fresh one all right so if you have you have one that you've done and that you've now cut in half. Did you work back into those halves? I'm working back into one now. Okay. I did go into one, not too happy with it. Okay, well, that's okay, because you know what you're gonna do? What, cut you it again. Half again. <laughs> <laughs> so, goodbye, really nice composition that I like so much. You're going away. Okay. I cut it in half, and yeah, it hurts a little bit, but. And I'm not being equal with my cutting. Good. They're, wow, they're actually almost perfect. Anyway, so now I've got two more. So now if I take this one, oh. it's become an, it becomes a new composition, which actually I don't mind either. It's almost getting to card size. It's a bit big for, for what I would do with my cards, but kind of interesting. This one, not as great a composition, not as strong, but I like this. I like this little arc here and I have some arcs going that way. So I'm gonna work back into this one now and see what I can create, you know, see if I can make a, a nice sort of Focal point, maybe here, maybe there. Did you get the tile size number? Hmm? Oh. I'm using my brush in a different way, which is sort of snudging it, I guess. So I'm creating something different here, but you know, I think. <clears throat> I'm just grabbing a different tool. So we cut them in half and then we go back into them. So this yep. we cut it in half. This was this was this one. Yeah. And now it's yeah, now you have two different compositions this to work on okay and then i cut mine in half again one of my halves so we, we work back into the ones that we've cut yeah 
This is another great tool. <laughs> dots, more dots. Well, you know, and I actually don't use them to make dots anymore. I no? used them when I first started to. Well, they don't make the kind of dots I make anymore. Okay. <laughs> Got you. Like the dots that I make are different now. Yeah. When I first started doing dots, they were Q-tip dots. Right. But now they're, they've evolved to, um, I, my dots are very precise and very circular. Ah. And I use different tools for them. At least these will work. Okay. And I'm probably getting too detailed here at this point because I don't really want to be this detailed, but I just wanted to try a different tool. Oops. I feel like I've got a little bit of mud going on on this one. Mud. Ugh. Yep, me too. That's okay. You know what you do when you have mud? Take it off. Or let it dry and paint over. <laughs> Put an orange on it. Put an orange on it. <laughs> Oops. Yeah. You can pat, but nothing else, or you'll start taking up the yeah paint or the paper yeah there see i didn't like the the mud i was getting so putting that little shock of orange in there uh-huh don't mind that oh gotcha geez now i don't know which one i like better mm -hmm. So once you've experimented with these, maybe you worked at, back into one of them, at least one of them worked back into, you don't have to work back into both. Um, find one that you, so what I did is I, when I cut it, I chose the one that I liked the least and I worked back into it because I quite like this one, but now I like the one that I worked back into better. So choose the one that you don't like the most. And this is your final little tidbit that you're going to do tonight. <laughs> you're going to cut it up. So I'm cutting this one up in pieces. The one you like the most? It was on my second cut. It was the one I liked the most. And then I worked into the one that I liked the least. Now I like that one better. So now this one I'm cutting up. And I'm just going to cut it up into a whole bunch of random pieces. Uh -huh. I'm doing fairly straight lines because that's how I want to cut it. Okay, well, I have one that's really muddy. Yeah, I don't like how diluted purple makes it muddy. How oh, diluted the what? Purple. And it just made it gross. Purple is very often used as a shadow when, yeah. you're, making, when you're doing a landscape or something like that because it can, it can really brown out a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So now I have pieces of a composition. And that's where I grab my sketchbook. And my glue stick. Oh, look, there's my little guys from last week. Or not last week, the week before. Oh. 
And then I can take these and arrange a composition in my book. And I'm not trying to put it back together. I'm just creating sort of like this, a mosaic, basically. A mosaic of painted paper in my book. And I can move things around. I haven't made any final decisions yet. Okay, my glue stick. There it is. Okay. One of the things I do like doing when I'm putting together a composition of my book, especially like this, is going off the page of the sketchbook because I think it's it makes it more interesting for it to go off a little bit. I like that one. Now in this, there is no focal point because it's just, you know, a mosaic of paper. Now I could probably create a focal point if I did something like move these two that are circles that maybe if I match them up or something, they might create a focal point. If I did that. But then I don't really want it on the edge of my composition. I want it sort of in there so it's more in the middle of what's going on. Great. I just thought it looked like a dinosaur eating something. <laughs> I just got this vision of what it looks like. That's got to go. Oh, I didn't use the big one. I used the small one for to cut up. That's okay. I used a small one too. Really? Oh, you must have a small book. My paper is pretty big. Okay. I like that spot there. So I, I didn't put a lot of thought into the composition that I'm putting in the book here, uh, just because I, well, I'm trying to do it quickly too, so you guys aren't too bored. So what is the purpose of doing that? Like, is that a, something they're going to work from later, or you're just kind of playing with some beautiful little creation or what? Yeah, that's all I'm doing is I'm just creating something. I like I like to put stuff in my sketchbook because then it, you know, it reminds me of what we're doing and and things like that anyway. But it's also just it's just another way to be creative, you know, taking just a painted piece of paper and creating a little picture out of it or a little design out of it. I mean, I, I'm not creating pictures. You could create pictures with it, but it's just creating a, an interesting design in your book. I mean, it's your sketchbook. You could work back into it if you wanted to do something on it or mm -hmm. then doodle it or something like that. But it's more like um, I'm putting it in the book here to show me th there's a way of treating this paper 
in a mosaic way that could be kind of interesting and will that work in a painting or something if I'm looking for a creative idea or even an idea for a card or something like that oh, I see I could be flipping through my book and see this and go you know what that's a really neat idea maybe I could create something really nice with this sort of mosaic and it just maybe it would give me an idea of something that I could do or I see. Or maybe it's just a little composition on its own. I mean, you could do this. I mean, if, even if you had a little mat or something, there's like a million of them here. I wouldn't even know where to show you to get a mat from. Like a mat board. No. <laughs> I do there. Perfect. So sometimes it's nice to have oh, a nice dirty mat lying around. Or a clean mat that's getting dirty. A clean mat that's getting dirty because I haven't put it away. Like even something like this, you know, if I'm putting, I haven't got this all glued down, but just for an example for you guys. Yeah, I want that little one too. Thanks. You know, putting a frame around it. Oh, it could turn into it could be a, like a little art piece, right? Even yeah. if I don't want to do a big frame like this, here's a little mat, and that could be a, like a little like I can see that being like a little piece of artwork if I got it all glued down. And maybe it gives me inspiration to, you know, what if I, what if I did this or what if I tried this next? I'm just trying to get as many glued down as I can. I completely lost what my thing was because I moved them around too much. Oh, well, <laughs> I'll just glue as I go. When I was doing the art classes in my home with kids, I found that sometimes after the kids left, I would sit and I'd, I'd continue just doing stuff for hours after they'd gone. <laughs> it's just like, I get so into it. I'd just be like, I think, I think I'll work on it some more. Now, with, what, one nice thing about Zoom classes, they're doing that at home and if you are, cool you know you're you're involved and want to keep going you can yeah. yeah you're not in a rush you you can just you can just sort of do what you want right and yeah or if They're you don't feel like the doors yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> don't have I to go up to be cold i need hmm? to go back to the construction thing so we cut one in half so here's a half of one and i don't i think i put a little more on it i can't remember Okay. And so we cut this again. You cut it again. And then, and then we cut it apart. And, and then and you are we you were, cutting you, are we cutting apart the one we like the least or the most like the most? The one you like the least. It's, okay. I don't want to make it so painful. <laughs> so when you so, cut it in half for the second time, work back yeah. into one of them, then decide work back into the one that you like the least. And right. then between the two of them, decide which one you like the least and then cut that one up. Because oh. mine changed. Do you know the one I like the most? Now I like the least because I like this one better. So that one got, the other one got caught up, cut up. Part of the problem is the wetness and having to sort of wait it out. Yeah. 
Well, I'm glad the camera's that way because otherwise you'd be just looking at her butt. <laughs> oh, do, do you like this? Do you like this craft? Missy, up. Missy, look up. Look up. Oh, there she is. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is our rescue cat who uh, she was uh, feral. Oh. When we got her, she had, she was in a hoarding house in Lethbridge and never had human contact. Oh my her. goodness. How old was she when you rescued her? Probably maybe three, three, four oh. years old. Oh, wow. How old is she now? Older. Older. <laughs> Older, <laughs> um, maybe eight or nine now. Okay, okay. But she went from not having any human contact to to this. Yeah. <laughs> she's, she's like, yeah, I can, I can handle you, Molly. Me. <laughs> now I'm leaving. <laughs> Amazing how animals, how quickly they can change from feral to lover. You know, we're fostering a little dog and she's now only been here for three days and she's just following everybody around and wanting a, you know, a hug or a pat or. Oh yeah. It's, it's so amazing, right? Like, yeah. Okay. Here's, here's my little composition. So here it is in my book. So what I'm going to do with the book here now, where I have these pieces sticking out over the page i'm going to cut those off because i i don't want them sticking out from my page but i like my compositions to go off my page a little bit because then it's not contained right stuck in the middle of my page it's part of the book then hmm. kind of turning it into a composition see so that like even in my sketchbook, you know, it's kind of interesting to look at, right? You, you kind of see it and you're like, oh, okay, well, there's some ideas or it's an idea of something you could do for something. Then even if I take my little viewfinder, you know, any of these could be like a, just an interesting composition in a painting or, you know, I could see people putting this on their wall, hanging this up on their wall. Got a little nice, little white space. Quiet space. Oh, Leslie, look how lovely that is. Look at your colors. My orangey reds together. Ooh, those are nice. And on top of it. I do like it. That, that was the one I liked the least. And well, that's... If, if you're going to wrap this up shortly, we can take it off. This view and everybody. This is the one I like the least. It irritates the hell out of me. <laughs> but that's the one you need to cut up then. It's a little tacky on the side, so I'm going to, I'm going to see if I can. Okay, we're going to switch the view here so that you don't have to look at my desktop anymore, so that if you guys want to show what you've been doing, then everyone will have a chance to see it. We'll just have it so that if you're showing, you'll, you'll show up on the, on the screen, okay. and then everybody can see okay. what you've done. All right, just a sec here. I don't think that was the way you want. Or we can do it like this. Oh, Elizabeth, that looks nice. We can just see ourselves. Is everybody else seeing us really big? <laughs> yeah, I think so. My Sorry. card stock was uh, only half size to start oh, with. So. Nice. Wow. If you go to gallery mode, you can see everybody. There's mine. What do you think? I think that looks, oh, look at your colors. That's They're awesome. so nice. And your nice sharp triangles. I like those. Yeah. Spencer? It's so funny. Spencer's in the, middle, in the middle on my huh? gallery. And he's like, he's just looking at everybody else's. <laughs> he's very happy. He's just smiling. Like oh, my palette. oh, my goodness. Look at the colors on that one. Wow. wow. Oh, wow. That's gorgeous, Dorothy. Oh, that's, uh, Thank that's you. Wow. wow. Did you do one, Chloe? Yeah. Let's see. Oh, oh that, nice. that looks That's fantastic. Nice. Yeah. It's fiery like you. It is. 
after you, after you said uh, kids shouldn't use black, she went ahead and did her next one with black as well. <laughs> <laughs> well she's, you know, a, she's a rebel. Well, it's okay if you want to prove rebel. me wrong. You can just go right ahead. <laughs> no I'll show rules. her. I like that. <laughs> I, I think that one's good. That's great. Okay, so you have a few more pieces that you have paint on that will be dry for next week. And next week, what we're going to do. So yeah, if you have book pages or any paper things that you would like to adhere on to it, we're going to do that. We're going to do some more painting and just adding some pieces to uh, one of those pieces and the board. If you, I don't know if you guys cleaned your brushes on your board at all. I did some. Did some. Okay. Yeah. Just start, you know, getting some paint on that, on that canvas board. Yeah. And that's great. You know, even when I'm, when I'm doing like a big painting and stuff like that, I'll very often just have a canvas right next to me and I'll start painting. I'll just, as I'm cleaning my brush, I'll just, even when I'm painting live in front of people. So I'll do that. And uh, um, the other thing that I had told you guys to start scrounging is toilet paper or paper rolls. Yeah. Um, styrofoam sheets from the bottom of your meat trays or any takeout trays or anything like that. If you have styrofoam, that would be good. Not the big chunky styrofoam. It's got to be that thin, thinner stuff. Um, what else was I going to say? I can't remember all the things I told you to scratch. Anybody remember? Yeah, <laughs> Did you see the tea bags? Oh, well, I said you could, but I don't know. What are you saying? tea bags oh okay and so the other thing is um some of the supplies that i'm listing i know a lot of the stuff you can get at michael's and stuff like that um we do have some links to some of the supplies on amazon so if you want to go in there and um have a look and do some shopping i'd be okay with that um i do get a little percentage if you do buy something it's like you know five cents here and there but it'll help pay for some of the supplies and stuff that we're using um, and, oh, and the supply list for next week, I'll have it on the, on the site probably by Thursday. And, uh, video should be up by tomorrow afternoon if you want to recap. And if you want to recap, the video is up tomorrow afternoon. If you want to invite people to have a look at the video and see if this is something that they want to give a try, that'd be great too. And, uh, anyway, I'm done for the night. Karen, before you leave, tell Karen. me how. When you, if you want to order something on Amazon, how do you do that? Like, do you just... So, Bill, do you want to explain that real quick? Hi, how are you? How is everybody? Well, thanks. <laughs> if you go to Karen's page, karenbico.com slash studio, which lists all the supplies, there's links on there you can click on. And they're not necessarily always the, the perfect product. Um, sometimes they're a little bit bigger. It might be 500 sheets of origami paper instead yeah, of 100 you might need. Um, I try to pick what might work for people. Mm -hmm. You click on one of those links and it'll show you some of the products that are available. Uh, and a lot of the stuff, as Karen mentioned, you can pick up locally, but if you have to order it in anyway, if she can get five or 12 cents off of each sale, she's ecstatic. Look at the smile on her face. And if you don't have to go outside in the cold, then you're happy too, right? Then we're all happy. <laughs> Even better. Yeah, <laughs> no doubt. So anyway um it's been great fun thank you guys for joining me tonight for this goofy little craft but uh we'll play next week and see what our creations become and don't forget to send pictures to karen of what you've done yeah so that we can share them on the facebook page so that we can get other people more excited about this and jumping on it yeah that'll be fun okay so that's great okay well you guys thank have you. a really good week stay warm yeah Okay. If you haven't finished all your pages, do some more. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was really fun. All right. Okay. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks, okay. Karen. Okay.